Welcome back, everyone, to Season 2, Episode 11 of A Kenji Let's Struggle. It's your boy, Cool Kid Croc, and today we're back in Fort Harold. Now, you're probably asking yourself, how did the Skeleton Group and Harold get back to Fort Harold? And, well, that's pretty simple. Now that they were back though, I had them go and unload their inventory of armor and other skeleton components and such. That way we have everything in this one chest here and it's looking pretty nice now to be honest. But on the flip side, our food storages aren't. I'm finally setting up the grain silo. We've got about four XL farms so I figured we could put in the stove as well as the storages for them and start actually making our own bread. I then put in two more XL wheat straw farms just in case we don't have enough wheat straw produced right now. Then I waited for those to basically get built and then I had people all work those first. So now we got quite a bit of wheat straw at least so we'll be able to balance out the food and take a bit. Bandits are still spawning in these houses. I'm not sure if a Minecraft method from a few episodes ago is working or not. But they have still been spawning in fucking platoons. Meanwhile, I went to go check up on Harold and I saw he was doing pretty shit in combat and that's because he didn't have any of his weapons. He had two m fucking Cacton yellow grade weapons that were really nice, both hacker class, his class. Now I have to go make him some more weapons because I'm guessing they got taken off of him during the castle raid. After Harold recovered though, I got him and the amp together, that way they can go over to Morn as there will be selling the cactus rum as well as trying to find any materials that we need back at the base. Now about an hour later, Harold was just about to get on the outskirts of Shem and he was being chased down by wild beak things, quite a good number of them. He had about a dozen of them following him, and even with his wheel leg, they were pretty fast and almost caught up to him. But we lucked out with a bunch of steel foxes running into the group and then attacking them. Without that, fuck, Harold probably would have been fucked. <laughs> but no worries though, we were able to sell all the cactus rum, make a nice profit, as well as check up on what kind of maps there were. Now I'm only grabbing one or two maps usually now, so we've got most of them that are in the local area. I then went and set up a new steel cage inside of one of the houses as we still got animals wild from the nomads that are fucking picking apart our prisoners. On the way back, Harold ran into a giant group of hungry bandits and I, I just wasn't fucking feeling this one. He was way faster than them so getting him out of that situation would have been a lot smarter. Meanwhile, all hell had broken loose at Fort Harold. I'm guessing that one of the nomads animals tried to eat our crops or one of our people or some shit because everybody was attacking the nomads and their animals. This always seems to happen eventually so I decided might as well make the best of it and recover some of the units. So I got a Garu, I have the two steel spiders so I got those all in a cage now and hopefully I'll be able to recruit them. I also grab the raw meat off of other dead animals that way we could bring it over to the campfire and make some dried meat. And not too important, but Imp Lord was hanging out in the pool over here of his little lake. Look at how much fun he's having. The only prisoner I was able to get to talk to us was this nomad that I threw in here. So I decided to name him after Teddy. Now I had over five people in the training group, but I still needed to get up all getting ready as there was another bandit that was just about ready to start training on. That way they could get their attack and defense up a bit. Meanwhile, I had Harold go over to the way station, that way we could grab a few limbs. Teddy needed a leg, as well as I believe Mr. Snakey was missing an arm. We made sure to hide the limbs in the backpack though, because we are going to recruit a new recruit from the bar, and we named him after Cool SS. Now I sent Harold and Cool back over to Fort Harold, meanwhile the training was still going pretty well. Once Harold had finally returned to the base, I gathered him along with the other skeletons in a platoon group, and then set them off to go to the Deadlands. We had not been to the Deadlands yet, but there's a lot to see there. A few hours later though, once the platoon was away from the base, the Swamp Ruffians fucking squirmed in and tried to <laughs> raid the base, but it was no worries as most of the people who have a base now are all well off. Meanwhile, the platoon was just approaching the Deadlands, and after entering it, we could see a few dust bandits getting their asses handed to them by one of the steel spiders. Now, these steel spiders are all over the Deadlands. They're just sort of inactive or deactive, but you really don't know. It's like some of them come to life, as well as random lightning strikes that get rather fucking close. <laughs> it's pretty fucked. Luckily though, we stumbled upon a ruins that wasn't even marked on our map yet, so I decided to go check that out. When approaching a ruins, Harold saw one of the nomad crimpers and was shocked as 
This Crimper is basically twice as strong as Imp Lord, so for anyone who thinks Imp Lord is OP and strong enough, we still got lots of fucking beasts to tame. Now that we had finally gotten to the ruins though, we realized nobody could actually pick the lock, nobody had a good enough skill, so smashing the door open would be the only method. Once it was open though, I sent the ant in to see what was there, and there's maybe about 8 security spiders, so... This wasn't fucking good. On top of that, everyone decided to fucking bum rush the doors, which was a horrible idea, as they would just get mass hit. I sent them all out of the ruins to try and escape. Now, in a different universe, in a different paradox, the group stayed around to fight these steel spiders, and of course, they were no match for them, just as I thought, and after the steel spiders knocked them out, they wouldn't be able to get back up. So they had no choice other than to just run the fuck away from them as their overwhelming strength is just too much for each of them to handle. Now once they were a good distance though, I had Harold basically do a fucking basketball move over back to the runes to see if he could check it out. But there was still one of the spiders in there, so we had no real choice other than just to send Harold back to Fort Harold along with the group. We also finally just glitched our training partner. This usually happens when you're not keeping track of them. But he ended up going through the wall, so I sent everybody around through the wall, and of course, fucking pack of dust ruffians comes up and tries to take us out. Now, there are just some fucking baby shits, though. Nothing to worry about, and then I had to look amongst the corpses to find the bandit that we'd been training on. That way, we could pick him up and put him in a cage. Unfortunately, none of them still want to talk to us, so I'm still having trouble with that. It's probably just a issue with one of the mods, but... I'll try to get that figured out, as the prisoners are starting to fucking starve. A few moments later too, we had a unit being eaten alive, and this was because one of the nomad's beak things just had decided to just start chewing down on him. Now once we picked him up though, uh, he, the fucking beak thing just went on to another one, so there was no real choice other than to just un attack unprovoked. Uh, in my eyes, I, I see it as a de declaration of fucking war, when a nomad sent their goddamn animals come eat my crops and people. Shit's not cool. I also realize we're barely producing enough water now for 12 different farm crops, which makes sense, but I put in another well, that way we're caught back up. And before we could return to the ruins, I had Harold go back to the way station and other places, that way he could pick up limbs and other stuff for the base. Now that the training group was mostly done though, I rearranged them back into the Fort Herald group and then went on to choose a few more people to be added to the platoon group. At this point, most of our units are pretty well off in stats with 60s or 70s in attack and defense. Some of them are a bit lower and some of them still need to get up, but most people are up there. And I know of course we're going to want to make our own armor soon so we can really start to do some good work, but... We're going to need either cotton or hemp. That's of course going to require us to go back to ruins. So with now Ruka and Kang and Imp Lord, they can now go back to the ruin site. No, I had an over there. I didn't realize that uh, Kang and Ruka had nothing to protect them from acid rain. So I just sent them back. But either way, the entire group was now ready to go with Imp Lord. They only had one bandit encounter outside of the Deadlands, which they engaged on. As it's just free training, you know, like basically free real estate, so can't give that up. Now once the group actually made it over there, a couple of the skeletons that were lured out before were actually still hanging out outside, or possibly new ones. I'm not quite sure, but either way, there's just two of them there, and they weren't too hard to take out. The second one, without even Implore getting a hit on it, got taken out, so... We're pretty well off in just groups of two of them. Then I sent Ant into the ruins, and there was only one spider thing. We didn't really need Implored, but I mean, it would have been good if we encountered the eight from the first time. Now that we could actually check out the ruins, though, and see what's all in here, there's a bunch of different storage chests and crates with various different things. Mostly weapons, but I found a blueprint for healing pods, which is from a mod. But that will heal up our guys a lot faster once we get to tech five of the research tree. Now most of the weapons range from about yellow to green to blue variety, nothing really too too low, but even the stuff that I don't think we'll use will still probably sell for a lot. I even found a skeleton leg and some chain mill. Well the only downside of this base was there's one fucking safe that we couldn't open up. We needed to grab some tools, but I needed to send Harold back as I had him deposit whatever tools we found from the other ruins sometime in the last episode. Once we got the weapon cabinets unlocked that we could, there was a lot to grab. The next morning, Harold would arrive back with a tool set and begin cutting the safe. And then, unfortunately, once looking in the safe, there's really 
nothing too much to write home about. I mean, there's a unique weapon and then a piece of copper. <laughs> there's not too much really, but I made sure to grab everything that we could. We really only left a couple of the cheap weapons. With that, we had everything of value basically on us, so I could send everybody back to Fort Harold to bring the goods back. Meanwhile, our bandits are now at about 50 hunger and would rather fucking starve to death than talk to our imbecile asses, so I gotta figure that out in my mods. As well as we keep on having platoons of like 5 to 30 people just move into the houses randomly, so that's been a lot of fun to clear out. Now in the double houses though, I put in three weapon cabinets. I figured this is where I'll put all the weapons that I got from the ruins and exploration runs. That way I don't accidentally deposit anything into the ones that we use for selling shit in. And our storage crate honestly looked pretty good. We had about one and a half of the weapon cabinets filled up with weapons. So that's pretty nice. And even the ones we don't use, you know, we can just sell them. Now that we finally had some electrical opponents, I could put in a few lights. That way our farmers wouldn't be working in the dark anymore. As well as fill up any of the houses that were still dark with lights. But uh, unfortunately, the fucking quad lights are absolutely pathetic. They don't cover any fucking ground, really. And we're... <laughs> I don't really know. I'm gonna have to figure out something for lighting because that is shit. But that's where I decided to end off the episode of the Kenshi Let's Struggle. I hope you guys liked this episode. If you did, remember to leave a like and let me know what you thought of it in the comment section below. Again, thank you guys for the overwhelming support on the series, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.